Today we're going to be making this adorable Christmas block and it is made using the mile a minute technique. Now this technique is not new. I learned about it probably 15, 20 years ago and when I did some research on it I wanted to see who invented it. I could not figure that out. So if you know let me know. There are a lot of books and a lot of videos out there on it but the technique I use is a little different than those. I'm not sure and I don't want to step on anybody's toes if this is something that somebody invented. Please 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 let me know. Before we get started with everything, my name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me. So let's learn about this mile a minute block. Now it is a crumb block technically, but it doesn't use a ton of crumbs. In fact, you only need as many crumbs as you are going to make blocks. So I'm going to be making 25 house blocks, I'm going to need 25 crumbs. So what is a crumb? A crumb is a small piece of fabric that's usually a scrap that's left over from some other project. So you can see here I have my crumbs ready to go. If I can get a hold of them. <laughs> There's 25 of these little pieces. I chose red and green but recently I made one of these quilts out of orange and black and white for Halloween. I decided to put a couple houses in this because when I saw the blocks just by themselves, they just needed something. I'm in love with the way this turned out. This inspired me to make this house block, which for this particular quilt, I'm making all houses, 25 of them, and they're all going to be the same size. So you can see that this project is extremely versatile. You can use any color you'd like. So have a lot of fun with this. The other thing that you're going to need are strings. Here's my pile of strings and there's probably, I don't know, 50 of them here. So what is a string? A string is a long piece of fabric that is anywhere from, I like to do one, one and a half inches to about three and a half inches, and they're all different sizes. This is important for this project, having a variety of widths for these strings. It just adds interest to the overall block as we make it. So those are the two things you need for the actual house bottom unit. Then you also need flying geese units for the roof, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Let's get started putting together this mile a minute quilt and it really does go really fast and is a lot of fun to make. First thing I'm going to do is set up my nest or my work area. I'm going to have my sewing machine, my cutting table, and my ironing board right there. So all I have to do is turn to cut, press, and to sew. For sewing, I love to use up any odds and ends of threads that I have. This is a great way to use up those partial bobbins that you have. It's very scrappy and very forgiving. You don't have to worry about matching thread. Next, I like to take two bins and I have these plastic bins that I use two different colors. One is for my crumbs and one is for my strings. You need a lot more of your strings than you do crumbs and I wish I could tell you how many. It really depends on the size of your crumbs, how many blocks you're going to make, all of that. Usually I end up cutting more and again I make sure it's a variety of sizes so it adds some interest. Okay so I have my two bins here and I'm going to move this one that has the strings in it out of the way and I'm going to take one of those strings and one of the crumbs and place it right sides together. I'm just going to grab one randomly and I put it right sides together right on top and I start to sew and as I sew I'm just going to keep adding crumbs to this strip of fabric and just keep going. Once I get to an end of a string I just add another string and keep going. I try my best to fill up the strings as best as possible before I add another one. It's very forgiving though, so if you don't get a full piece on there, that's okay. We can trim it down. And then I just add another string and keep going right through. Now I want to avoid putting two together that are the exact same fabrics, but uh, I really don't worry about if it's reds and greens going with reds and greens or reds and reds or greens and greens or however you want to do it. Just try not to use the exact same fabric on the strip. We get to the very end where I have all of my crumb pieces used up and I make sure that I don't have any more. I just trim off that end tail and I'll put that in with my strings. Now you can see all of my strings and my two units together here and the next step is to trim them apart and put them into my crumb bin. So I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. I find scissors the easiest. I've tried rotary cutter but for me this just works best and I'm just going to put them into this bin of crumbs as I cut them apart, keep them real organized. 
Now that we have that entire pile of units with two pieces together, we're going to press them. And the first thing I do is I set the seams and then I press them to one side. Right now, it doesn't matter which side. As we get into this a little bit more, I like to press out. Now it's time to trim all of these pressed units. So the thing you want to do is make sure that you have a clean, straight edge on at least one side. So I'll take these and just cut one side to make sure that it's nice and straight. Now I can get fancy and cut it in an angle. It adds more interest if I want to. It doesn't really matter at this point. You'll be twisting and turning the block anyway. And I'll do that to all 25 of these units and make sure I have at least one edge that is straight. Okay, these are all trimmed. So I have 25 units and I am sure you can guess what we're gonna do next. We're going to take these over to the sewing machine. We're gonna use some more of our strings, add these to those strings and just keep going. Same process, we're going to add the strings, then we're gonna press, then we're gonna trim until we get a unit that's big enough for whatever size block we're going to make. I'm going to be using a six and a half inch block, but you could go bigger or smaller. Okay, so I have some units done. You can see them here, I think I have five. And my goal is when I'm making these is to make them bigger than the piece that I'm going to cut down. So I'm going to do a six and a half inch block and I have my six and a half inch ruler here. You can see, let me see a big one here. You can see this one is much bigger than the six and a half. And that's gonna give me a little wiggle room to turn this and twist it if I want to. One thing I wanna be aware of is I don't wanna to have too skinny of pieces on the edges, but they can be small, just not super small because then it can get lost in the seam allowance. So I think I really like this. I'm using my rotating mat and I'm going to cut around this. And that's gonna give me a perfect six and a half inch square. Oop, I caught, didn't catch that end there. Get that. Okay, just like that. And isn't that a cute little block? And it's cute as is. So let me show you that again, just so you can see. Here's another one. This one has a lot of green right here. So I don't need all of that. Now before I move my ruler, I just make sure everything is cut, or I should make sure everything is cut. Which right there, again, I missed. There we go. All right. Oh, look at that one. That one's really cute too. You can see that I have pieces here that I can use for another crumb quilt if I want to, or I can put them in my bin for dog beds or whatever. So the more crumb quilts you make, the more crumbs you get, it seems like. They just go crazy. Now that I have my block trimmed, I am going to pick what I want to be up, and I think I want the roof to be right here, and I'm going to add my side panel. So these are one and a half inches wide, and I'm just gonna put them on here, turn them over, so a quarter inch down on that side, and so a quarter inch down on this side to make this. And through the magic of YouTube, of course, we have one already done. You can see that I pressed out towards the background fabric just like that and that's the bottom of my house all ready to go so let's talk about the roof so for the roof for each roof you need two four and three quarters inch squares now this is how i do it you might have a different way of doing flying geese units because that's what this is this is just a flying geese block you can see the sides in the middle and I like to use the uh, block lock ruler because you know how much I love these. So in the instructions for the size I want, which is eight and a half inches, it tells me what size to make these squares. So use whatever you use to make flying geese, okay? And there's tons of tools out there, tons of rulers, all kinds of stuff. Next, what I did was I drew a line from corner to corner and you can use the tape, there's seam tape that you can use as a guide, which I do have on my machine, but I really like just drawing it out. And then I like to put a line a half inch away from this 
and then I'll sew on this line. And that just gives me bonus half square triangles. So I'll have a whole bunch of those when I'm done and I can maybe make another quilt with it or something else. So then I'm gonna take my base block. Again, this is the measurements through block lock. Yours might be different depending on the technique you use. And I'm gonna place it on here. This particular one is eight and three quarters by four and three quarters. So I'm gonna take my four and three quarter inch block, put it on here. I'm gonna sew right down here and then right here to get my bonus block. Okay, so I sewed this, you can see it here. There's two lines and you can see how it's kind of bubbly. Hopefully you can see that. What really helps with that is just taking an iron and setting those seams and then that will lay nice and flat. Next, I'm gonna just take my rotary cutter, measure in a quarter inch to separate this bonus block. Just like that. And then I'm gonna ever so gently, because this is a bias edge, press this with my fingers. And then just press it with my iron. It's a little wonky, but it will trim up nicely with the lock block ruler. Next, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, and I have one ready here. I'm going to sew, he so here's my block that I just put on. Here, I'll show you with this one. Although it's the opposite side, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which side you put on first, at least for this method. And then I'm going to sew here and here to get that bonus block. And once I have that sewn and pressed, I have a unit that looks like this. And you can tell it's a little wonky, but with the block lock ruler, I just line this up, put in the grooves, and then just trim. And you can see it is a perfect Well, I missed that middle part here. Let me put that back on there. There we go. A perfect flying geese block, and that's gonna go beautifully on our house. Right here. It should line up exactly, and it does. So next, I'm just gonna sew this to this and get my adorable Christmas house, just like that. And I did different roofs. I did reds and greens, so I'm gonna mix them up in the quilt. I just think it's so cute. Aren't these just so cute and fun? And I just love them. I think they're gonna make a great quilt. I'm going on a retreat, and this is gonna be one of the projects I work on. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. I will show the results of this project there. I'm sure you'll also see it in a video update if you don't have Instagram. So much fun. Just imagine these in like uh, patriotic colors or even like little houses for Valentine's Day. Wouldn't they be so cute? There's so many things you can do with this. You can add the roof, not add the roof. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller and just have a lot of fun with this project. I hope you enjoyed this mile a minute quilt project. Please let me know in the comments if you did. And also, if you found value in this video, please give it that thumbs up. That really helps me out. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I will see you real soon. Bye.